Now I'm going to put the run method on hold while I explain the method named green screen draw. This method is shown in its entirety on the right of your screen. The method named green screen draw requires four incoming parameters. The first parameter is a reference to a source image of type picture. The second parameter is a reference to a destination image of type pixer, pix, picture. The third parameter is a horizontal coordinate on the destination image where the upper left corner of the source image will be drawn and the last parameter is the vertical coordinate on the destination image where the upper left corner of the source image will be drawn. The green screen draw method draws the source image onto the destination image at the specified location. However, however, and this is critical, source image pixels that have a pure green color are not drawn on the destination image. Note the exclamation mark or not operator that appears in the conditional clause of the if statement on the right side of your screen. You could interpret this as saying if the color of the source pixel is not equal to green, then draw the color of the source pixel into the appropriate location on the destination image. The effect of not drawing some of the pixels, in particular the green pixels, is to make it appear that those portions of the source image with pure green pixels become totally transparent allowing the destination pixels in the same locations to show through. As I mentioned earlier, JPEG image files are not satisfactory for this program. Picture objects that are created from JPG image files typically won't have a pure green background even if those images had a pure green background before being compressed into the JPG formatted file. However, the BMP file format does not corrupt the pixel colors, therefore BMP images work well for this type of processing. Some other image file formats such as PNG are also satisfactory because they do not corrupt the pixel colors. So the green screen draw method is shown in its entirety on the right of your screen. This method is very similar to other methods that I have explained in earlier lessons that use nested for loops to draw one image onto another image. The only thing that is new in this method is the if statement that is shown in boldface on the right of your screen. This if statement test the color of source image pixels for a value of exactly color dot green or more correctly not color dot green.
if the color of a source pixel is not green, that color is drawn onto the destination image. However, if the color of the source pixel is green, that color is not drawn on the destination image. So here are three questions for you. Does the color class belong to Ericsson's library or to Sun's library? Is the variable named green an instance variable or a class variable? And third, why is the variable named green presented in all uppercase characters? And here are the answers. The color class belongs to Sun's library. The variable named green is a static class variable because it can be accessed without a requirement to instantiate an object of the class named color. The variable named green is a public static final variable which in fact is a constant and Sun's standard convention is to represent constants with all uppercase characters. Once again let me emphasize if the color of the source pixel does not match color dot green exactly it is drawn on the destination image replacing the pixel color previously at that location on the destination image. If the source pixel color does exactly match color dot green it is not drawn on the destination image therefore it leaves the color of the corresponding destination pixel unchanged. This makes it appear that green pixels in the source image are totally transparent. The code on the right of your screen signals the end of the method named green screen draw. Without getting into the technical details, I will tell you that this is roughly how TV stations superimpose a human weather forecaster onto a giant animated weather map. The forecaster is photographed with a video camera while standing in front of a green or blue screen. At the same time, an animated video of the weather map is also created. Each video frame of the forecaster is superimposed onto a video frame of the weather map. The green or blue pixels in the forecaster frame are not copied onto the weather map frame. This allows the weather map pixels to show with the exception of those that are replaced by the pixels that comprise the human forecaster. The forecaster must be careful to avoid wearing clothing that matches the color of the green or blue screen. Otherwise the clothing, that clothing on the forecaster would appear to be transparent and the entire forecaster would appear to be transparent allowing the weather map to show through portions of the human weather forecaster. Returning now to the run method on the right of your screen when the third call to the green screen draw method returns this code adds the student's name to the snow scene picture 
displays the snow scene picture in a picture explorer object and displays some information about the snow scene on the command line screen. Then the run method terminates and returns control to the main method that you saw earlier. Because the main method has nothing further to do, the main method and the program terminate and return control of the operating system as soon as the user removes the images from the screen. In summary, you learned how to write a program to do green screen processing, also known as color key or chroma key processing. In particular, you learned how to write a program to superimpose a source image onto a destination image while making the green background of the source image appear to be transparent. That concludes lesson number eight, titled Green Screen Processing. You can learn more about this topic on my personal website at www.dickbaldwin.com.